So the distinction I want to draw and the, the, the pair of terms that I want to try and define are ones that we're probably very, very familiar with uh, and relate closely to this discussion of propositions and what counts as a proposition, what doesn't. And it is um, the difference between a fact and an opinion. Okay, what's the difference? What is the difference between a fact and an opinion? Yes? A fact is always true. Okay, so a fact is always true. Okay, yeah? Opinion would be biased. Okay, so it can be biased. Okay, what else can we say? A fact is proven. Okay, proven, or at least provable. Okay, what else? Anything else we can distinguish here? What else can we say about, uh, about opinion in contrast to all this? Anything? How would we define them? How would we give actual definitions of each term? So they're based on feeling, so they're descriptive of someone's feelings about something, yeah. Okay, so belief. Anything else we can say? Facts are like concrete, but about it, I guess. Okay, so they're concrete and objective, maybe we can say? Okay. All right, is that pretty good? Anything else to add? All right, almost entirely wrong. Sorry guys. It's not your fault that we're almost entirely wrong here. Um, this is uh, what we all learned for our entire lives. <clears throat> so it's not your fault that you're completely wrong about this. Um, I was completely wrong about this for a long time as well. Um, the trouble is that uh, most of us don't think about this distinction at all beyond like, I don't know, third grade, roughly. Um, this is one of those things which we all learn very early in our education. Unfortunately, we learn it wrong, but then it gets sort of embedded in our thought processes throughout the rest of our lives and we never really have the chance or the reason to question it. Uh, this is going to be a major theme of C.S. Lewis's The Abolition of Man that we're going to start reading next week. So keep this in mind. Um, and to that, to that note, for that reason, um, if you'll all open your uh, essential homeschool kindergarten workbook um, to page 83, I, I don't expect you to have this, it's fine. Um, in case you didn't bring it, I, um, I have it here. Here we go. Um, there, great. Um, I'm recognizing this because not only did I learn this wrong a lot of years ago, and you all presumably learned this wrong a few years ago less than that, um, my own kids have been, well, if I had not stopped it from happening, would have been learning this wrong literally right now. This is, this is my, my daughter's school book from last year. Uh, she's in first grade and would have, of course, learned this um, had I not stepped in to, <laughs> to rectify matters. In any case, what we have here as a definition is a fact is information that has been proven true. So proven true. Okay, opinions are how someone feels about something. Uh, if we go to the next page, we have another set of definitions that are similar but not quite the same. So let's see. Uh, a fact is information that has been proved true. Opinions are how someone feels about something. Okay, never mind. They are the same. Um, so. What's wrong with this? Anybody? Okay, let's take our first example here. Fish have scales. I know I'm really regressing us here, but bear with me. Um, fish have scales. Is this a fact or is this an opinion? Okay, 
great. Why is that? Okay. Do you believe that? Yes. Hold on. Are you sure it's a fact and not an opinion? I mean, you think it's true, you believe it, right? It's a belief that you hold, and I thought opinions were beliefs that you hold, or, I mean, so here, here's, here's, start, here's where we start to run into problems. Some things are very obviously both facts and opinions. If I think something is true and I'm right, it's both, right? So instead of having these, what we think of as these mutually exclusive categories, we tend to think of facts and opinions as, as these two categories and any given statement will fall into one or the other and it can't be both. No, no, that's absolute nonsense. What we have instead is something more like a mostly overlapping Venn diagram. Plenty of statements fall into this middle category of both fact and opinion. Now, instead of all this, here's what I'm going to propose as a definition, as a pair of definitions. And these are also closer to the like, philosophically precise definitions as well. A fact is a true proposition. Okay. An opinion is a proposition believed or held to be true. Okay. So first of all, looking at the overlap in our categories. A lot of things go in this middle category. Things that are both fact and opinion. Uh, generally, what we would call true opinions. Things that you believe to be the case that are. Now, I say most things because we as human beings tend to be pretty good at figuring out what reality is like. Now, okay, maybe, maybe you'll say, wait, hold on, we're pretty fallible, we make mistakes all the time, we get things wrong. All right, yeah, sure, fine. But if you think about this in the broad scale of things that you think are true, you'll find that most of those are in fact true. In fact, if I, if I were to just start asking you guys for just tell me something you believe or tell me something you think is true, if you start with really simple things, it'll be a very long time before we get to any false beliefs. Right? Somebody give me an example. What's something you believe is true? Keep it pretty grounded here. How about fish have scales? There you go, great. We've gotten one. What about the lights are on? What about it's daytime out? What about this chair is green? What about that chair is green? What about that? We could keep going. It would be a very long time, especially if we start with the really basic stuff, before we get to anything that's even remotely controversial, let alone false. Most things that we believe, in other words, are probably true, we're pretty good at figuring out whether things are true or false. Now, we, like I said, we do make mistakes, that's fine. And in those cases, things that are opinions but not facts, things that we believe that we believe they're true but they turn out not to be, these are just errors or mistakes. Which happens, but it's an outlier case. Similarly, things that are facts but not opinions are things that are true, but no one believes them to be true. These are unknowns. Things that are, in fact, the case, but we don't know about them. Again, relatively common. There are some things that we just don't know, but there is a fact of the matter. They might not even be provable. For example, how many rocks are on the moon? Anybody? No? I don't know either. No one knows. Like, almost by definition, no one knows. 
Now, even if we're really careful about how we define rock as being a you know, you, silicate matter chunk between, say, this size and this size, so the moon doesn't count as one and dust doesn't count either, right? Even if we're really careful and we specify, right? That is, a, that is something that is basically non-measurable, at least by human means. We can't figure that out, but there is an answer to the question. There is a whole number answer to that question that in principle no one knows and no one will ever know. Maybe something more down to earth. How many blades of grass are on this campus? It's a much smaller number. It's probably a number that you could pronounce. <laughs> Unlike the number of rocks on the moon. That, that, I don't know what number that would even be. It would probably involve like 10 to the exponent or something. But blades of grass on this campus, that's a manageable number. That's probably only in the billions. But where in the billions? I have no clue. No one could ever possibly know. And that's not just because t counting it would take, a would take a very long time. It's that counting it would take so long that the number would change by the time you're done counting. So it is humanly impossible to know. However, there is a fact of the matter. So, again, facts are not necessarily proven or provable. There is a fact of the matter that there is whatever number of blades of grass on this campus that there is, but it's not something that we could ever prove. So again, fact just has to do with truth. Opinion just has to do with belief. And that if you believe something, you by definition think that it's true, therefore, Every opinion you hold, you think is also a fact, and you're probably right about most of them. All right, with me so far? All right, I'm going to make things more confusing, because that's just what we need right now, right? All right, um, I'm going to write a couple, of, uh, a couple of statements on the board, and we're going to try and, try and parse these a little bit. Right. Statement one. Chocolate ice cream is better than vanilla. Okay, with me so far, or maybe very against me so far. Either way, we get it. Okay. Statement two: I prefer vanilla ice cream to chocolate. All right. So first things first. How many of you agree with statement number one? Chocolate ice cream is better than vanilla. Raise your hand if you agree. Okay, a few of you. All right. All right. How many of you agree with statement number two? Vanilla, I prefer vanilla ice cream to chocolate. How many of you agree? All right, cool. So with respect to statement number two specifically, um, why do you agree? Those of you who agree with statement number two, I prefer vanilla ice cream to chocolate, why? Tell me why you agree. Say again? Okay, what does that have to do with this, though? Okay, but what does your preference have to do with this statement? Yes, it does. However, I asked if you agree with this statement. You haven't mentioned this statement in saying what you prefer. Okay, let that, let, that, let that ruminate for a second. Um, let, let's go a little further, and I'm going to make it a little bit more annoying. Um, these two statements, I noticed that when I asked who agrees with this one, who agrees with this one, no one raised your hand for both. I do, though. I agree with both of these. I think that both of these statements are true. Am I contradicting myself? Remember, law of non-contradiction. It is illogical to say that a statement is both true and false, but I, the logic professor, more or less, seem to be saying that I think this is true and I think this is true. Am I contradicting myself? Mm-hmm. Um, no, because it says you prefer vanilla ice cream to chocolate, but you do overall think chocolate is better. 
Okay, let's work through this. How do I mean to distinguish those two things? What's the difference here? How can we reconcile these? Okay, but again, what do we mean by opinion in this context? If, it's, if this is my opinion, and so is this, so both of these are my opinions, it seems like I have contradictory opinions, so it would seem, right? Maybe what we would be saying, maybe we could say that this is someone's opinion and this is someone else's, right? Because we did, our, we did the whole like voting, raising our hands thing, and some of you agreed with this one, so that's some of your opinion, and some of you agreed with this one, so that was some of your opinion. But I'm the oddball here in that I agree with both of them, so what gives? How do we reconcile these two? Because I, I agree, I don't think I'm contradicting myself here. What do you think? Opinions change? No, no. I mean, they might. Because you might think that something is true and then you might come to realize that it's false or believe something, or not believe something, but come to realize that it's true. I might, at some point, have preferred vanilla to chocolate, but then I saw the light and I started liking chocolate better. But I'm not saying that, right? Now, that's a fair reading of this. So I'm not, I'm not saying this is, this is outlandish. But I'm just clarifying to make matters worse. I am, in fact, saying that objectively, right now, universally, chocolate ice cream is, all other things equal, better than vanilla. And I am saying that right now, consistently throughout my life, I do now and have always preferred vanilla ice cream to chocolate. Yeah. So one could think that, right? That said, I've run this, I've, I've done this lecture before, I've run this survey a lot of times and typically more people agree with sentence two than sentence one and that goes for this class as well. So I would not have a reason to believe this in that case. I probably think that more people prefer vanilla to chocolate. So I don't actually have a reason to believe that if what this means is most people prefer chocolate to vanilla. So that can't be really, that either can't be what it means or maybe I'd be wrong about it, but no, that's not what I meant. I don't mean anything about what most people prefer here. Mm -hmm. How so? Which one's which and how? Maybe, but remember our definitions here. And remember how I said we were completely wrong about everything we ever knew about facts and opinions. Right? That you're stating it along the lines of the definitions that we all learned in kindergarten. Right? That I'm stating this one as if it were a fact in the sense that it's objective. And I'm stating this as if it were an opinion in the sense that it's about me. That's, that's, you're on the right track. But I don't want to use the distinction between fact and opinion here. Because I think, at least, that both are both. I think that this is a fact, and therefore it's my opinion. I think that this is a fact, and therefore it's my opinion. <clears throat> so I think both of these fit into our middle category here. Now, if I'm wrong about one or the other of those, then it'd be over here. But you're onto something here, that there's a difference in the way that I'm stating each of them. There's an important difference. And that important difference is crucial to why they are not contradictory to each other. Anybody get it? Yeah, yeah, personal pronoun has a lot to do with it. But let's look at exactly. Let, let's just look at this grammatically, right? That'll help us. What is the grammatical subject of sentence one? Chocolate ice cream, technically. Okay, so sentence one is about chocolate ice cream. What is the grammatical subject of sentence two? I. This is about ice cream. This is about me. 
how do we reconcile these then? They're about different things, right? What's this one about? Yeah, and comparative taste and quality of chocolate and vanilla ice cream. I'm saying one is better than the other. Right, I'm talking about how they taste, their flavor, how they work as, as an ice cream flavor. What am I talking about here? Yeah, like what I like to eat. So how do we explain this? How do we explain this apparent difficulty? Explain my thought process in believing both of these if you can. Put all this together. Great example. Yeah, that's that's a that's a fantastic example. Um, I have always been a Bucks fan. They have almost never been the best team in the league, and when they have, it was very short lived. But that's those are different things, right? Saying I'm a Bucks fan and saying the Bucks are the best team in the league are wildly different statements. One's false, one's true. But that's because one of them is about me and how I see myself in relation to and how I relate to a particular team, and the other one is about like quality, actual, actual like ability to play the game. Those are radically different things. I just like a team that isn't the best. I just like a flavor of ice cream that isn't the best. There shouldn't be anything that weird about it, right? I have, with respect to ice cream at least, I have what's called bad taste. And I'm not saying that, you know, Bucks fans have bad taste, maybe, but probably not. In this case though, I'm talking about aesthetic judgments. And if I'm making an aesthetic judgment here, but I'm preferring the thing that I'm admitting is inferior, I'm saying, yeah, I like the inferior one. Can anybody think of other examples of this? Because there's tons of them. What about movies? Anyone think of an example of a movie that is just terrible, but you'd like it anyway? Probably. Any, anyone come, anything come to mind? Yeah? Oh, okay. That might be a different kind of a question. That, not what I was getting at, but I think that works too, right? That something might be really good, but I like something else better, right? I'm getting at something that, I'm going a little bit more extreme than this. I'm saying that I think something is just bad, but I like it anyway. Like, is anyone ever, is anyone familiar with The Room by Tommy Wiseau? Those of you who are know that it is probably, if not the worst movie ever made, one of the worst movies ever made, and probably the worst one that was ever made without intending to be bad. It was a real heartfelt effort at making a good and dramatic film that was horrible. Um, in fact, it was so bad that they made a movie about how bad the movie was in the production, nightmares and everything. Um, and it's not like it was just like a, like a low budget student film or something. It had a budget of like $120 million or something. I don't know if exact, exact, it's exactly that, but it was, it was a lot. It was a Hollywood budget. And I think I've made high school film projects better. And I'm not good at this sort of thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's atrociously bad, but but it has a huge cult following of people who will watch this movie over and over and laugh their asses off in like theaters full of other people also enjoying the crap out of it for some reason, not because it's good, but because they're having fun with it because they are enjoying something that is bad. We can do this, right? We can do this sort of thing. There is this distinction between Something like this, which is a preference. Right. We're stating a preference. We're talking about what I happen to prefer. Right. If I prefer something, that is a statement about me, not about the thing that I prefer over something else. This 
is a statement about the thing we're talking about, in this case, about ice cream. So there can be true statements about my preferences that don't seem to align with statements about the actual things themselves. Right? Like I can acknowledge that, that the Bucks are far from the best team in the league. I can acknowledge that The Room is a terrible movie, and yet I can still cheer for one and like the other. Right? I can still have bad taste with respect to ice cream. So again, this, why I bring this up here, why this is so crucial, is because we typically think of things like this, statements of preference, and statements, evaluative statements about things like this. We usually put both of these in the category of opinion, and we usually think of the category of opinion as factually meaningless, as distinct from fact. Because if you look at our, our kindergarten workbook, right, if you look to, especially the second page here, right, we have these pairs of statements that are supposed to be the difference between fact and opinion. Right? And you'll notice that all of the ones that are supposed to be opinions are evaluative statements. They're placing a value on something. And we are pretending, for whatever reason, that that is not factual. We are pretending that statements like, I would love to live in an igloo, is not a fact about the speaker who would love to live in an igloo. It is. It's just about the preferences of the person who's saying it. Or here, another statement like, boats are fun to watch. That's a statement about boats and the entertainment value of watching them. That is not a statement about the preferences of the one speaking. Now, it might be true, it might be false. Boats might be fun to watch. Boats might be boring. We'd have to kind of evaluate that. But we can. We can do so. Why I emphasize this so much is, be is because when we start categorizing things as just opinion or just a matter of opinion, we usually do so to dismiss it and treat it as unimportant. And given that this is an ethics class, one of the major categories of things that we wind up shoving off into the category of opinion is value statements. You should do this, you shouldn't do this, this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad, very often gets kind of shuffled off into, well, that's just your opinion, man. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And usually that's an excuse to not talk about it, or at least not to treat it seriously. So, for, for example, right? So if I were to say something and then say, but that's just my opinion, what am I really saying there? If I say, for example, I think the moon landing was faked, but that's just my opinion. What am I really doing there in the conversation? Don't judge me, it's just what I believe. Yeah. Right? I'm saying, I don't want to hear your counterarguments. I don't want to know why I'm wrong. I don't want arguments. I want to stop thinking about it, and I just want to enjoy my wrongness. Or maybe enjoy thinking that I'm right, and I don't want you interrupting me. In other words, I don't want to talk about it. It's a, it's a much nicer way of saying, shut up. Now, even worse is, that's just your opinion. Yes, you did. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. <laughs> right? Um, like if somebody says something and you respond, that's just your opinion. Again, what are you saying? What does that mean? I don't care. Yeah, it's not even just I think you're wrong. It's I don't care what you're saying. It's completely dismissing what they have to say. Whereas if we take opinion as really meaning that something is something that you believe to be true and that presumably you have reasons for thinking that, and you say, that's my opinion, or I say, that's your opinion. Rationally speaking, that should be an invitation to further logical discussion, not just a, yeah, let's move on, I don't want to talk about it. Right? No, no, it should be, well, if that's your opinion, here's why I think you might be wrong about it. Here's why I think we did land on the moon, or here's why, um, I don't know, pick an opinion. Here's why I think that you probably don't want to live in an igloo. <laughs> Whatever. So 
So again, we treat things as if they are opinions mostly to dismiss them. So we should be rather thinking of, rather than thinking of things in terms of, well, is it a fact or is it an opinion? We should be thinking of things as, okay, is this a proposition? Is this stating something that could be true or it could be false? And if it is, if it's that kind of statement, we should try and figure out if it is true or false. This applies to, to the ordinary sorts of things that we would ordinarily think of, things that we ordinarily think of as fact statements, but it also applies to ethical propositions as well, which is the bread and butter of this course as we move forward.